Our next guest is one of the world's most well-known women soccer players. She's a two-time World Cup champion and, oh, no big deal, an Olympic gold medalist. <laughs> but also she's become a queer icon after publicly coming out in 2019. She's here now to tell us all about her pride and what this month means to her. Joining us now from the Red Bull Arena in Harrison, New Jersey, where there's a game in just a few hours, please welcome Gotham FC defender Kelly O'Hara. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome. Hi, Kelly. guys. How are y'all? Hey there. <laughs> happy Pride. How are the vibes? How's how? Kelly. Happy Pride. How are the They're vibes great. over there? How's the energy? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Listen, the, the music is going. The dancing is going. I mean, we're ready here. Yeah, but Kelly, before we chat about that memorable moment, last month you made a big announcement. You said that the 2024 NWSL season in Gotham C uh, FC will be your last how does that feel, closing the chapter of a historic career? What, what can you tell us? Yeah, you know, it's definitely a bittersweet uh, moment to come to retirement. Every athlete has to go through it, but um, I have nothing but, you know, a lot of gratitude in my heart, and I'm very thankful for everything this sport's given me. I'm going to miss the game, but it's been a great career, and I, um, you know, I can't imagine doing anything more, and I'm just thankful that I, I got to do everything that I was able to do. Kelly, as if you didn't have enough going on, you've recently added executive producer, thank you very much, to your <laughs> resume. You produced a Woo! short film called Ripe. It premiered at this year's Tribeca Film Festival. Again, no big, no big deal. It also won big. Can you tell us more about the film? How were you able to, to juggle all of this? Yeah, you know, prioritizing sleep has been really important these days with a lot going on. But yeah, Ripe, um, first first foray into executive producing alongside uh, my fiance, Cameron Stanhouse, also a business partner, a uh, really good college friend, Luke Anderson. We all executive produce this film. Um, it's directed and written by Tusk, which is um, Olivia Mitchell and Carrie Furr. And it's just this beautiful love story between these two girls um, that meet through soccer and it's shot in Spain. It's just just, it's gorgeous and um, you know like y'all said it's been racking up some awards so we're really proud of it and you know excited to make it into a feature hopefully soon uh, so if anybody's looking to invest give me a call because uh, this is something we want the world to see <laughs> yeah that's what a yes, true yes, EP yes. does exactly. it calls out always I love it Kelly I've Hit learned, a system. I've I learned love that. you know <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> you came out in the most epic of ways five years ago, kissing your fiance after winning a championship. When you look back on that moment, how do you think people process it? And how did you process it afterwards? You know, it's funny. People are like, oh, you came out in 2019 when you when you smooched your girlfriend. And I was like, well, I actually, you know, I, I feel like I had been living my life very out um, up to that point, but I guess not like on a public grand stage. And for us, the intention, you know, my intention wasn't to come out in that moment. It was just sharing this special moment with my person and my rock and, you know, the person who had gotten me through and helping me to win that World Cup. And um, I think it resonated with a lot of people that like coming out doesn't have to be this grand gesture. It can just be living authentically you and being yourself. And I've received so many letters and like messages since then about how that's impacted people and um, just given people hope and, you know, the courage to just be their authentic selves and um, to know just be able to be themselves and I think I think that's super special and I feel very lucky to have been able to impact people in that way. Well, it seems like the perfect fairy tale ending that you kiss your true love and all this magic happens. But <laughs> Kelly, do you think that the world of soccer or maybe even the world of sports more broadly is becoming more accepting of the LGBTQ+ community? Yeah, you know, I think that for me, soccer's always been a really safe and accepting space. Um, I know sport hasn't always been that way, but I think that, you know, we're trending in the right direction. And um, I've always felt through through my life and my career that it's been the place that's allowed me to, you know, be my myself and um, be my authentic being, I guess. And I think that it's becoming that for more players and you know fans and people surrounded with the game and i think that's what's so special about sports is that it can bring people together and unite people and and hopefully you know create this a safe space for everyone
Kelly, something you said earlier was so impactful to me because I believe that same thing. It's not always about coming out. Coming out, a queer person knows that they're uh, who they are. They already know who they are. Coming out is for everyone else. I like to call it letting you in. And I think, Kelly, you've let us <laughs> yeah. in. You've let us into your personal life. And Beautiful. never say, the word really coming nice. out has never set well with me. It's uh, when other people find out what you really are, you're letting them in. So not coming out, but letting you in. And you've been so gracious to let us in about your wedding planning, uh, right? You were engaged back New Year's Eve in 2022. And you said you were going to start a wedding planning this year. Have you at all set a date? Can you want to share with us? Oh, he wants oh the tea. Oh, my God. <laughs> you yeah. guys are, uh, well, yes. well, first of all, I love that. I love that. Letting people in. Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. We haven't been wedding planning just because there's been so much on our plate with everything that we've been doing we like keep looking at each other being like when are we gonna do this but obviously with me retiring it's gonna it's gonna open up it open up the schedule and give me some free time to um, be able to actually like pick a weekend because we work weekends playing soccer so um, you know 2026 hopefully that'll happen that's our plan uh, so we'll plan potentially end of this year into next year I'll take it. Okay, I mean, he got a headline. <laughs> I know. Oh, thanks thanks you. for letting us in on there all the feet. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, Kelly, Kelly, you've been playing soccer since, oh my gosh, you were four years old. Do you have a favorite yeah. moment of your career? That's just amazing. Oh man, um, you know all of the all of the moments and the big victories that everybody gets to see are so special. Uh, you know, winning gold in 2012 was honestly a childhood dream come true because for me the olympics was the first picture and visibility of like female athletes on tv really i remember watching the 1996 olympics and watching the magnificent seven the gymnastics team and just how incredible they were so for me winning gold was super cool um and something that you know again life lifelong dream but i would say 2019 world cup was also really special just because i was I was coming off an injury and you know we were going back to back and there's so much pressure but honestly there's been I, i've been lucky to be part of so many big wins and exciting moments but truly the the thing that i'm going to take for my career and, and the moments i'm going to look back on and smile are like the little ones that is away from the public eye and just between teammates and um you know those those little mundane things that we go through as athletes i'm gonna i'm gonna look back and really cherish well, one of those little mundane things actually wasn't so mundane. It's free agency. And last <laughs> year, you became oh, yeah. the first player in your league to be a free agent signing. What was that like? And can you explain to viewers why it's so important that athletes do have that ability to become free agents? Oh, yeah. No, that definitely, I wouldn't say that was a mundane thing. That was a stressful thing because free agency was like, it was the first time that we were able to actually have autonomy and, you know, self-determination in terms of where we were going to end up in play. And um, I was the first player to sign with the team, to sign with um, Gotham. And it is really, really important for the sport, um, you know, around the world. That's how football is done. There is free agency and, you know, players get to decide where they want to play. And and just as humans, it's really it's really nice and important to, to be able to choose where you get to play. You know, um, again, I was lucky enough to do that the first player to be able to do that. And, and I'm hoping that our league is going to very soon allow everybody to be free agents and to be able to decide where they want to play. Because, you know, you want to be able to be with your person or be around family or go to the city you want to play for, or play for the team that you want to play for, not necessarily where you get traded to or where you get drafted to. Well, Kelly O'Hara, you said you're going to miss soccer, but I know soccer is going to miss you mm -hmm. too. Thanks so much for joining us today and good luck to the team. Thank you, guys. Y'all have fun. We're missing out, but we're with you in spirit. Oh, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you.